Dr. White, for uh, being here today and for your opening comments uh, and testimony so far. Uh, this government came to power, uh, just to show campaigned on being the most transparent, transparent government in history. Uh, yes or no, do you think that uh, the government has become more transparent? Uh, it's, a, it's a broad question, to be honest, but I can say that at least how it's trickling through the Department of National Defense is what's transparent are the problems. I would have to ask as compared to what? Compared to, well, they said it was going to get better. Have it got better or got worse? Well, I can only speak from a personal perspective. I would absolutely say it's gotten worse. Okay. I went through a process at the end of my career uh, that wasn't pretty, and I referenced it in my opening comments. And I suggest you go back and look at the transcript. There were about eight or ten people involved in that whole. I got to be careful here. Uh, I'm too old to be sued. Uh, <laughs> there were eight or ten people involved protected in three. that situation. That, without an exception, to the person, every one of them was promoted. No one was ever challenged on the actions that they took and the part that they played in this scenario. And everyone, without exception, was promoted. Mr. Walburn, you, in your opening comments, you talked about a common pattern. You had five things listed as a common pattern, multiple ombudsmen. When we look at the, the situation with the former Chief of Defense Staff, John Vance, and you took that to Minister Sajan at the time, did that follow the same pattern as what you'd experienced and your predecessor experienced up in that point in time? It got worse. As an ombudsman, Part of your role is to advise the minister and seek guidance on files that cannot be solved at the lower level. And you've got to go to the minister with issues that are, sadly, a few of them end of life. Uh, but if you can't get into the minister, if you get shut down, the doors are closed, and someone on staff can refuse the ombudsman to meet with the minister, and it happened consistently after that episode. Uh, so it not only did the pattern stay the way it was, you know, lather, rinse, repeat, which I witnessed for four and a half years, it got progressively worse after that. So, Mr. Walborn, um, when currently, uh, with the current system works, is the Deputy Minister, the Defense Ombudsman, and the Judge Advocate General report directly to the Minister that they are uh, order and counsel appointments. Uh, so, the government is proposing in Bill C-66 of adding to that list the uh, Provost Marshal General, the Director of Military Prosecutions, and the Director of Defense Counsel will also become order and governor and counsel appointments, and they will also uh, report to the minister. Now, you've long advocated, as well as your, your successor, uh, Mr. Lick, uh, that the Ombudsman Office should become a fully independent office reporting to Parliament, uh, being properly resourced uh, to remove political interference. Do you believe that having more people report to the minister uh, circumvents, as Mr. White laid out, uh, the chain of command covering up for each other and no accountability, uh, or does it open the door for more political interference? In my opinion, it absolutely opens the door for more interference. Uh, if we put them in the same position, and you know, you say on paper who reports to the minister, uh, I had to go hat in hand to the deputy minister in order to get money, in order to get authority to do staffing. So if we put them into the same situation, I don't know how, in what world you think you're increasing transparency. If you start bringing everyone into the house and putting them under the same set of rules, I just think it's going to get worse, not better. Mr. White, you made 11 recommendations when you appeared before the Ethics Commission, uh, Ethics Committee. Uh, those uh, 11 uh, recommendations still stand? I would say for the most part, they certainly do. Um, I'm, I'm certainly following some of the feedback and the testimony that's come out of the, the previous meetings here and understanding that, again, the government had rejected a, an accelerated process for, for sexual misconduct uh, victims and survivors requesting information. But I think that at the end of the day, there, I would want to have heard in the deputy's response, which I did not hear in his, his defense of that rejection, that information that might come into play in a court setting, if there's a statute of limitations or a limitation period or some court timeline that cannot be amended, are you going to tell a sexual misconduct survivor or victim who has to give a victim's impact statement that, I'm sorry, we, we just process everything and all the ATIPs we get in order? So uh, I think to your specific question, if, if the committee thinks they're relevant. 
that knowing that we uh, down the road here are going to be studying uh, Bill C-66, which is changes, changes to the military justice system. Both of you have extensive experience, and unfortunately, from a negative standpoint with military justice uh, and, and the way it's been carried out. Would you be prepared to appear as witnesses on Bill C-66 as well? If Parliament passes it. it. Well, yeah, yeah, it has to come to committee. Well, I'm sure you'll put forward that, that request. Yeah.